It's been a year that I created my YouTube channel on top of my full-time job. Happy birthday! Hey! I can't believe it's already a year. Like, time flies, right? If you are thinking about creating your own YouTube channel on top of your full-time job, and you fear that you don't have enough time to start or sustain a successful YouTube channel, then you definitely need to keep watching because what I'm going to tell you is going to hopefully help you so much. All the key success factors that made this channel run smoothly so far, not that it's the fastest growing channel on YouTube, I know. But it's growing steadily and beyond that, I'm building strong foundations for my business going forward. And more importantly, I'm having a lot of fun on the way. I am so excited to share with you my seven very actionable steps to build your YouTube channel on top of your full-time job. Hey, bonjour, I'm Hugo and I help busy professionals be more productive and get back in control of their own time. If this sounds like you, consider subscribing and ring the bell to be notified every week, actually twice a week, for new content. Ready for my seven step I followed in order to build my YouTube channel on top of my full-time job? C'est parti! The first step is to actually decide a topic, right? I am basically a process improvement and time management nerd, we can say that. I'm so passionate about this topic that it only makes sense that this would be the topic I would need to cover on my YouTube channel. I just wanted to share some knowledge that I have, uh, some expertise, and it happened that YouTube was the best outlet for that. It's as simple as that. So my recommendation to you is to decide what topic you will want to cover on your YouTube channel. And it doesn't mean that you will have to stick with that topic all along. Action brings clarity on your topic and on your message. And you might want or need to pivot at some point or niche down on your topic. Second step that I have for you to build your channel is to set smart goals. I set smart goals for myself one year ago. By the way, if you don't know what smart goals are, you definitely need to check out this video after watching this one, right? Because what I'm going to tell you is important. The smart goal was, I'm going to upload one video per week in 2019. For the whole year, that's gonna be 52 video. I don't want to miss any week. I did my research and I understood that a week is uh, the minimum recurrence recommended by YouTube to have a higher chance to have a successful YouTube channel. So I went for that. So your action, your recommended action now is to set your SMART goal for the next year. I hope you're taking notes. The third step that was really, really important for me was to be able to take decisions. You know me, I do not accept the phrase I'm too busy or I don't have time. <laughs> you know it doesn't fly with me, right? Huh, it doesn't fly, time flies. Hmm, that's funny. So I wouldn't accept any excuse, especially for myself, not to deliver on that goal and that, on that promise that I made to myself. So I chose this goal and it's very important to be very disciplined if I want to give myself a chance on my business and on this platform. So I made an assessment of my available time and my priorities. And I looked at how much I could fit into these 24 hours that I have available into my day. I have the same 24 hours as you, right? So it's all about what you fit into your jar of life, right? If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch the video on the jar of life. So my partner, Sherry, being pregnant at that time, I knew that my son, Luca, would be born within the next six months when I started my YouTube channel. So I had to make priorities, right? What was important for me? Spending time with Sherry, spending time with Luca later when he would be born, work because I still have a full-time job, and this passion project that I wanted to pursue. I had to let go of other things that were not aligned with these goals. I call these activities non-value add. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch this video about value added, non-value added. So why did I let go? Or considerably reduce 
basically social events, hanging out with friends and having a beer, go golfing. And not that I'm not doing these activities anymore, but I had to considerably reduce them. So for my friends that are watching this video right now, you know why I'm not coming that often anymore to go have a glass of wine or be with you. The fourth step that I have is to, once you have your priorities set, is to stay really disciplined. I did a lot of research on how to successfully start a YouTube channel. So some very good references, if I can, if I can help you with that, is um, Amy Landino, uh, Sunny Lenarduzzi, uh, Video Influencers, uh, Nick Nimmin, and of course, a lot of other successful channels. I link their channel in the note below as well, if you don't know them already. So I just lay down my process, all the process steps that I needed to follow in order to get one video out. Basically, it's research, script writing, shooting the video, editing, and promoting. These are the five steps, like the five main buckets. And of course, as a business consultant, I needed to lay out my process, right? So I stayed very organized and very disciplined, and I batched my content, bundling three or four videos at a time together. This means that I waited to have three or four scripts done so that I could shoot three or four videos at a time and these three or four videos will later be edited. The fifth tip is to time box your time. As I have a limited amount of time during my week, due to my full-time job mainly and my family time, I needed to make sure that I had enough time in my week to get everything done. So this is how I schedule my time. Waking up at six in the morning in order to get at least one hour of work done every morning before going to work and another hour after my workday, plus a minimum of four hours a day every Saturday and Sunday. That gives me a total of 18 hours of work per week. This is plenty of time to work on pursuing your passion. See, when you look at it from this angle, you have a bunch of time. Also lately, in order to step up in my role and give myself chances to grow, I started hiring editors to help me with editing videos, which was a major part of my time spent on this process. So thanks to them, I'm saving eight to 10 hours a week, which is awesome because it gives me back so much energy, so much clarity and creativity to continue on this journey. The sixth step that I have for you is to anticipate. I anticipated hiccups or moments that I knew I won't be able to sustain this rhythm. One video a week is pretty tough rhythm when you have a full-time job. For example, with Luca, I knew that he was going to be born in June, so I needed to have some buffer. I needed to create some backlog of content and work a little bit harder prior to his birth and have at least two months of content ready. So for Luca's first month, I didn't have to work that much to be able to sustain that rhythm and I was able to enjoy more time with him, with Sherry, as I already prepared some content for this period. And this is applicable to so many special events, planned vacation or unplanned for that matter. It's always good to have some buffer, at least two weeks of content is a good idea. And the last step that I have for you is to enjoy the ride. As I said earlier, action brings clarity. I started my YouTube channel without really knowing where it would go. Not that I know much more right now, but it opened the doors to so many opportunities, to getting to know more people, very interesting people, to collaborations and genuine and meaningful work. I fully agree with Gary Vee when he says that you have to fall in love with the process. I love the process of the work. I love the grind. I love the climb. That makes total sense because otherwise I would have given up like way, way, way before. If you're only doing this for the results and for the money, this might not be the right move. But more importantly, you might miss a lot of fun on the way. I hope this was helpful. Was it helpful? Let me know in the comments. I really hope this motivates you starting your own YouTube channel or help you structure your process if you already have a YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for trusting me with your time. I'm so happy that you've been here for like a year now for some of you 
Thank you for being subscribers of this channel. If you're not a subscriber yet, you know what to do. Or you can just stay and hang out and watch more videos. Thank you. See you next week. Au revoir.